So in our last video, we went ahead and took a look at how to create kind of a smooth follow camera with the, ooh, Sponsor Eagle. But we made our smooth follow camera with uh, using Slurp and Lurp, and it works okay. I use this method quite a bit, except for cameras. I think cameras are the only thing I really don't like it on. I find it just to be a, a little bit jittery at times. It doesn't seem to fit every circumstance that I would like as far as cameras go. It's great for anything that isn't a camera, but for cameras, I like to use something else. So let's go ahead, we'll jump back into our script. And I'm gonna go ahead and comment out what we did last time. And I'm gonna call this new function I've added. I've gone ahead and put it into a separate function, just so it's easier to see what we're changing. So I call it smooth follow. And let's just take a look at the code. There's basically three lines of code here, similar to what we have up here for the following. The first line is just calculating that two position where we want to move to. It's the exact same. Now the second line of code, let me actually uncomment this just so you can see the colors. It might actually help a little bit. So the second line, we're still calculating a vector three, which is our current position, the position that we're going to be at. Uh, the way we calculate it, it's a little bit different. Before we use the lerp, and remember the lerp is just gonna go ahead and take position A and position B, and it's gonna to move towards that based on the time that you specified. Well, with smooth damp, we're gonna go ahead and still have this position A. We still have this position B we wanna to get to. Now we're gonna pass in this reference velocity or a reference to a velocity. And we also have a dampening distance. So let's take a look at this reference velocity. We'll get into refs a little bit later on when we dig deeper into C-sharp. Uh, but I've gone ahead and made this public variable up here, velocity. It doesn't need to be public. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna switch it back to private after this example. I just wanna show you the values changing in the inspector as we play. And if we go ahead and actually take a look at the documentation for smooth damp, there's a few other variables that I'm not actually going to use in this example, but are available to us. So if we go ahead and take a look down here, uh, the transform position or the position that we're at, the position we want to get to, as uh, what they tell you up here, uh, the current velocity is the velocity. This value will be modified by the function each time the value is called, which we have down here. Then of course we have the smooth time, which up here is the approximate, uh, approximately approximately the time it will take to reach the target. A smaller value will reach the target faster. And we even have the ability to cap the speed. So we can say never move faster than this. And of course the delta time, which by default is time.delta time. So let's jump back into our code and move on down to the next line. So the next line, I'm gonna go ahead and just go take that current position that we just calculated and assign it to my position. Now, if you take note here, all we're doing is just storing out this vector three and then copying it to my position down here. We could just as easily take my position and paste it in like this and then just get rid of this line here. That's perfectly fine, but I just like to have it each one on a separate line for demonstration purposes, showing you know each step of the way. So let's go ahead and we'll comment this back out. And then for the quaternion part where we're going ahead and rotating, I generally replace this with just a simple look at. So we're gonna go ahead, go into our transform, call look at. We're gonna tell it the target position. And we're also gonna tell it that we want our up position to be the same as the target's up position. Let's actually go ahead and take this part out right now. Jump into Unity. I wanna make sure everything's commented out that needs to be. All right, we got that. All right, so I'm gonna go out and add one more piece to our ship just so we can see what is up and what is down. So I'm gonna create a new cube. I'm just gonna rotate a bit. I wanna move it up. And this was actually supposed to be part of the body, which is fine, it really doesn't matter. I'm gonna move it back a bit. I'm gonna make it a bit thinner. Not much. Let's click on the scale, bring it in a bit. Good enough. I, it's just to show what the top of my ship is. So let's go ahead, we'll start it up. Uh, let's click on the follow camera so you can see that these values here for the velocity are being changed every frame. As we start going, we fly along. Now it's really far behind. We're actually gonna have to go ahead and adjust some of these values. So we're, no actu we're not actually using rotational damp anymore. But we are using the distance damp, and we're going to have to really dial that down for this one. So let's do 1.5. We'll start there. And for the velocity, I have it set to vector 3.1. It really doesn't matter what you set it to because it changes at every frame anyway. So let's go ahead. That's about right. And we'll notice that we're still getting that little bit of sideways camera action. What really happens, though, is when we start to spin upside down, by default, well, of course, my display crashed. By default, 
Your up position is always calculated according to the horizon. And we don't want that behavior. That's where the look at comes in. So what we really want to say is make sure that our up is the same as whatever the target is deeming as being its up direction. It's local up, I guess. So we'll start this back up. And now when we rotate, we stay with it. Even when we're technically upside down. Now, since I'm going to be in space, there is no up, no down. We just don't want the camera flipping around on us. I'm going to come back in and comment out rotational depth. Since we're not using it anymore. And if we wanted to make it a little bit more advanced, what we could do is have this uh, was a default distance. We could have this being lurped around behind the ship and then having our smooth follow camera follow that. That way there we have um, much more control over how much we want to sway to the left and right and up and down. But I think this is actually good enough. I can see enough of the top and bottom when I move around. I've got that elastic in and out. And everything's good. The only downside with doing it this way is that everything's controlled by this one value, uh, the damp distance. I'm just going to see if I want that better. Maybe go out to a two. Let's start this up. Five might be a little too close. Uh, maybe not. Now we can see a little bit more, it looks like, on the side. Not a whole lot more. But anyway, there we go. I particularly like this way better. I find for the camera, it adds much a much smoother follow. But if I have one game object following the other, or I want to maybe the brightness on a light interpolate from point A to point B, or one brightness to the other, maybe I'm interpolating between colors, I almost always use the lerp and slurp functions. But ultimately, it's up to you, whatever one you find better. Let me know down in the comments if you've actually played around with smooth follow cameras before. Which one do you prefer? The smooth damp or the lurping and slurp? Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You'd be a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>